Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. It keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. What is going on, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Music Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Lily Holmes. Today, as of always, we are going to talk about a multitude of topics, starting with the best of Taylor Swift. We're also going to talk about the Pitch Perfect soundtrack, a movie that defined my middle school years. And I want to give you guys the best road trip songs if anyone is feeling more comfortable with traveling as we're slowly starting to step out of the pandemic. If you're getting back into maybe road trips, if you don't want to get on a plane or a boat just yet, let me let you guys know what the best road trip songs to listen to are. And finally, we're going to talk about Post Malone, my favorite rapper. I'm sure we all can agree Taylor Swift is usually a punching bag when it comes to pop industry and making fun of it. I personally think we talk about Taylor Swift's relationship a lot more than all of her remarkable success in her career. I am not a Swifty, or at least I would not call myself a Swifty by any means, but Taylor Swift is a artist I grew up listening to, I'd say frequently, and I still listen to her music today. I do not you know, sit here and await her albums when she announces that she's releasing one. But once in a while, I will go check out her new music if she has released it. It's not like I sit there and I listen to every single song on the album like I may do with Justin Bieber or a few other artists, but definitely a fan of her music. And I think she is very, very talented and I have her favorites. I'm sure a lot of you may know Taylor Swift started out as a country artist Back in 2006, since then, she has changed and excelled and prospered a lot. She has a total of 136 songs on the Hot 100 for Billboard. Yes, you heard me correctly, 136 songs. That is not 136 weeks with one song. That is not rated artist, that number 136. That is is 136 individual songs that have appeared on the Hot 100 Billboard. That is such a huge accomplishment, and I, I'm i proud of her. Again, I'm not a Swifty, but she has worked hard, and she seems like just a great person. We also share the same birthday. Fun fact, she was born December 13th, 18, not 18, 1989, and I was born December 13th, 1999. So she is exactly 10 years older than me. What Taylor Swift has done on the artist for for the artist chart for Billboard is she stayed on there for 352 weeks total out of her career. I can't do the math on that because we've mentioned before I'm not good at math. But if you want to go calculate how many years that is, 352 weeks, I'm sure we all can agree that is a very, very large number. She has had nine studio albums. And each of her studio albums, I think everyone at least knows one song off them. Maybe I'm reaching, maybe that's just kind of, I, I grew up with a certain amount of people, but I feel like everyone knows at least one song from every single one of her albums, because I think at least one song, I don't want to say every single, at least one song from every single one of her albums became a hit, but they came pretty close if they weren't a hit. Taylor Swift has 11 Grammys, and she also has three Album of the Years uh, out of those 11 Grammys. So three times, not in a row, but three times she won Album of the Year at the Grammys. 
awesome. Winning, just winning a Grammy in general is amazing, whether, you know, it's song or writer or anything. But three album of the year Grammys is phenomenal. Something I found really interesting that I really didn't, you know, think about when I was thinking of artists and music is she has 28 Guinness World Records. So she's broken 28 Guinness World Records, you know, in her career. And the Guinness World Record book, that is, you know, that's just open to anything, right? Any kind of world record. But when I think of Guinness World Record, I think of longest paper straw hats to be made in China. Like that, I think of stuff that is not, you know, is common to hear about. But 28 Guinness World Records books, not World Records books, 28 Guinness World Records were broken by Taylor Swift. Absolutely amazing. She has 32 American Music Awards. 32. I, gosh, that is just so many. 23 Billboard Awards. And get this, that is the most Billboard Awards by a woman. Taylor Swift has broken down a lot of barriers for women. And this is just one of them. I, it, I, she makes me proud to be a woman in, in many ways, of course. And I think she is a great role model for not only young women and older women, but people in general, right? I think she stands for a lot of good stuff and she's hardworking, right? And she just seems like a kind-hearted person. At the end of the day, I don't know where she could be a very not kind-hearted person, but from what she does and what everything sticks, everything she stands for, she's breaking a lot of barriers. Rolling Stones actually named her as in the top 100 greatest songwriters of all time. Taylor Swift is also a songwriter other than just a singer. She writes a decent amount of her songs and she writes a decent amount of the majority of them as well. By the way, there's nothing wrong with people who don't write their own songs or if they have songwriters, but that is a big compliment for Taylor herself and that means a lot to her. Her net worth is a whopping $365 million. Just like there's 365 days in a year, there is $365 million for the net worth of Taylor Swift. And she deserves every penny of it. When you think of Taylor Swift's genre, she's changed a lot in the, you know, since she started back in 2006. She went from country to country pop, and then there was some country pop rock music. And now she's kind of between folk, 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 and alternative. I would definitely say her pop is my favorite kind, but I, I still listen to some of her new, newer music, and it's still awesome. Taylor owns her own production house called Taylor Swift Productions Incorporated. It's uh, something that produces music videos along with a few other things. We've talked about recently, Taylor Swift recently getting the masters back to her music. And she's really putting herself forward and controlling her entire career, which is another thing we talked about. And Kudos to her. It is awesome and is a huge accomplishment. And I'm very glad to see such a popular artist with such a huge platform. Not only is she advocating for such great things, but she's following through. I'm sure a lot of people can agree that a lot of artists and other people in the spotlight will advocate for certain things and then go back in their lives and do the complete opposite, almost making them a hypocrite. So I think Taylor Swift is stand, standing for a lot of things and following through. She has sold over 50 million albums worldwide and 54 billion streams. 54 billion streams. I just want to mention there is only, it's a little, I believe we're at 7.6 billion as is the world population right now. So uh, the world population times, what is that? Eight is how many times the it, it streams Taylor Swift has had. That is absolutely amazing. Think if there was seven, that that is if there was seven of each and every individual in the world streamed the song just once. That is about 54 billion. Again, not good at math. Don't quote me. But oh God, 54 billion streams, that is so huge. People will sit here and hate and hate and hate on Taylor Swift for whatever reason. I'm not really sure at the end of the day. I, I don't understand it. A lot of people will say, well, 
all she does is write about, you know, her ex-boyfriends and her relationships. And I see a lot of male artists do the same thing, but they don't really to receive any kind of criticism. So I, I think that's, uh, that's very discriminatory towards Taylor Swift for doing the same thing a lot of, a lot of other male artists do, but, you know, getting paid for it. But anyways... As much as people want to hit on Taylor Swift, she's still collecting the check at the end of the day. And people are listening to their her music, whether they like it or not. They're listening to it. I'm sure everybody remembers. If you don't remember, you have at least heard about the incident at the VMAs. I want to say it was 2008 or nine, where uh, Taylor Swift was winning a VMA for... I, I can't remember what category she was in a category and you know, she was about to accept her award and none other than the Kanye West jumps on stage and you know he has the classic line I'm gonna let you finish and that goes goes on to talk about how Beyonce had one of the best songs or music videos of the year and in other words he was saying Taylor you don't deserve this and it was kind of funny where he's like I'm happy for you I'm gonna let you finish but you know then proceeds to almost bash her and from everything that has been said and everything I've read and everything, you know, in the media, that was not staged. That was not fake. That was not planned. That really happened on live television on an MTV video music awards show. That's when I think of Taylor Swift, that is one of the bigger things I think about that woman was bullied. I mean, I think we can all agree that that was just straight being bullied, but I think they've made up since then, you know, they've bygones or bygones. But I, unfortunately, I think that's a huge, I don't know if career defining moment is the right word, but a huge thing when people think about Taylor Swift or Kanye West. Taylor Swift has a bunch of great songs. And again, I don't know every single one of her songs. I know a decent amount. So I, I'm going to list to you guys my favorite ones. They're not really in any particular order. They're just ones I really, really love. The first one is the classic love story. I had to play this for my boyfriend the first time the other day, and it was so upsetting that he had never heard it. I feel like we're classic, like, age generations. Like, we're both 21. The song, he should know it. You know, when Taylor hits that line, you know, it, Marry Me, Juliet, ugh, you just get so excited. It, it, it's the best thing ever. I've always said that I don't want to be proposed to in front of a crowd of people, but if I get proposed to on, you know, someone while the song is being played in public at a concert or something, that is acceptable. I have seen two or three different videos where, you know, the song was being sung. Uh, one of them was at a Taylor Swift concert and when they were singing karaoke, and, you know, when they said, got down on one knee and said, marry me, Juliet, you know, people proposed and it was some of the cutest thing I've ever seen. Again, I don't want to be proposed to in public, but this is the only accept, acceptable way that I can to be proposed to in public. So Love Story, though, is such a classic. It is one of my favorite songs by her. I listen to it to this day. I sing it at the top of my lungs. It It is just so, it's such a good song. I love it. I really do. Next one is You Belong With Me. This is another really, really classic one. You know, she wears short skirts. I wear t-shirts. Relatable line, first off, because I hate short skirts, and I only really exclusively, exclusively wear t-shirts. So, very relatable line. Um, but a great song, too. Off her, you know, Fearless album back from 2008. I can't believe the song was almost 13 years old at this point. Not almost, it is 13 years old at this point. A great one as well that I, I really, really love. Next song by her that I really love is Mine. This was off her Speak Now album. I believe that came out in 2010. Um, this is a really cheesy love song, you know, when she sings Best Thing That's Ever Been Mine and that kind of stuff. And we've mentioned before, I love cheesy music. You know, I've accepted it. So should everyone else. You just you gotta listen to cheesy love songs sometimes. It just has to happen. You know, it's it's just the way of life. Just like you gotta eat your vegetables sometimes. Even if you don't like them, you gotta do it. Just like you gotta listen to cheesy love songs. I know you don't, you may not like my comparison, but you know, it's true deep down. <laughs> so mine, great song. Next one is Red. I really, really like this song because I think it shows a lot of maturity in her, 
choice of lyrics. You know, some of the things that, you know, she says in the song is like uh, missing him, like, uh, like missing him is read as if, and stuff about dr- driving a fast car down the road. And it's, it's very intense. Like she, she gives a lot of intense similarities and it, it really talks about breakup in a more mature way than she does in a lot of her other former songs. So I really like, because again, I think lyrically it shows a lot of maturity. Next one on the list here is 22. I know everyone loves this song. My 22nd birthday is this year and I will be ringing it in at midnight with this song playing. I have to. Everyone that turns 22 has to. It's just, it's just the law. You have to do it. It's a really great party song. And I think what's a little different about this song is I think it's one of the bigger songs out of Taylor Swift that got really popular that is not a love song. This truly is just a song about being 22 and partying. I mean, at one point in the song, it shows you look like bad news, I gotta have you. But besides that, it is not some kind of intense breakup love song or anything like that. And I think it was good to, you know, go out of her roots a little bit with that. Next on the list here, we have Back to December. This cheesy love song. Nothing wrong with it. Love it. It's actually not love song as much as a breakup song because, you know, she talks about haven't seen your family in a while. How are you doing? And, you know, she wished she could go back to that one time because she's talking about she messed up. And so she wants to go back to December and fix whatever happened. I like this song because it's about four and a half minute, minutes long. And I've mentioned before, I really, really, really love longer songs because I feel like songs are only getting shorter and shorter as time goes on. And I hate that. So that's one reason I really like it. And it's a slowed down song. And it's just awesome. It, Taylor Swift is so talented. It, it's almost hard to sit here and explain why I like the songs of hers that I do because she just has a great voice and she truly does write things very, very well. So again, it's hard to explain why I like them because some, some of them, there's not really a huge explanation as much as I just, I really, really like it. She is so talented. I'm, I'm happy that as of late, people are kind of not hating on her as much as they used to, because there was definitely a time where she just got so much hate for no reason. And uh, Obviously, there's always going to be hate in the world. Unfortunately, we we can dream of a better time where everyone loves and world peace. But I think everyone understands my point. It's awesome to see that people are really recognizing how truly talented she is. After we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the Pitch Perfect soundtrack. One of the best acapella soundtrack movies I have ever seen. And don't forget, later on, we're going to talk about my favorite rapper, Post Malone. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. everybody we're going to be switching gears from taylor swift to the pitch perfect soundtrack and later on don't forget we're going to talk about my favorite rapper ever post malone one of the most famous rappers currently but now we're going to talk about the pitch perfect soundtrack i'm assuming most of you have seen pitch perfect or you have heard about the movie movie came out in 2012 and like I mentioned before, it really, really defined my time in school. When the movie came out, uh, gosh, I remember everyone was trying to do the cup song. And when Anne Kendrick does the song with, I can't, I don't think it's a solo cup. I think it was just a plastic cup. But 
use that as her instrument. And I remember everybody was trying to learn how to do it. And some people couldn't, some people couldn't. I never even tried. I was, I would just embarrassed personally fail. And I thought I would save myself the utter disappointment and shame of all my friends because I think almost every single one of them could do it. And some of them could even sing while they were doing it. So they sat, they, they could basically, you know, do the exact scene. And I was just over here like, cool. But anyways, Pitch Perfect was such a huge movie. Uh, there was three movies. I think the first one is probably my favorite. And we've talked about before, sequels sometimes really fall under the bus. I love Pitch Perfect 1. Pitch, first, Pitch Perfect 2 was meh. Pitch Perfect 3, really love that too. 1 is definitely my favorite. So the Pitch Perfect soundtrack for the first movie was the sixth best selling soundtrack of 2012. Sixth best selling soundtrack. That is absolutely amazing. To be in the top 10 of any kind of, you know, list is awesome. And, you know, to be sixth for best selling soundtrack of 2012 is so, 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 so cool. I really love the music. The music. I really love the movie. And they had such a huge variety of music on there. All of the songs, I believe, were covers, and some of them were, you know, made to have their own kind of spin on it. They had artists like Rihanna, Azalea Banks, David Guetta, Kelly Clarkson, Andy Kramer, Nicki Minaj, Boys to Men, Miley Cyrus, Michael Jackson, Bruno Mars, CeeLo Green, Pitbull, Jesse J, and so, 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 so many more talented artists that they covered songs for and added their own spin. And in my opinion, some of it were just, were made even better. The album also became the best-selling soundtrack of 2013 in the United States, with 793,000 copies sold in 2013 in the United States. So awesome. That is so many. I think this movie and the soundtrack too really took the world by storm. And by war, I shouldn't say world. I, I, I mean the United States. I'm not sure how well it did globally. I just know how well it did in the U.S. It was the... I'd say the cup song that got the most popularity and recognition from the movie. It, it it was such a huge trend on YouTube. People were trying to, you know, learn how to do it and sing. And they started making up their own songs, you know, but using a cup, doing their own kind of beats and their own kind of rhythm. And it, it a revolution is the wrong word, but it started such a huge, huge trend that, I, again, it really defined middle school for me. As of April of 2015, over 2 million copies were sold in the United States for the Pitch Perfect soundtrack. At this point, they were already, I believe Pitch Perfect 2 had already come out, but the first Pitch Perfect soundtrack was still making huge headway, you know, selling 2 million copies for those of you who are not familiar with the Pitch Perfect movies, I mean, it's basically a movie about an acapella singing group in college. And, you know, the main character, Becca, she wants the, she's a little more on the edgy side. She wants to be a music producer. And, you know, but her dad really wants her to join, you know, some extracurriculars on campus. And, you know, she decides to join the acapella group because she really loves music, even though it's not really her thing. You know, she falls in love with all the girls and the competition, and she starts having so much fun. And, you know, the movies are kind of about that and all their trials and tribulations of college and acapella competition. Does acapella and, of course, pop is the main genre of everything they sing. Like I was talking about before, the song Cups by Anna Kendrick peaked at number six on the Billboard Hot 100. That is no surprise there. I love the song to this day. I still listen to it. I don't know who originally came up with the idea of using cup or cups as a musical instrument, but it is so intelligent and creative. It It, it is just an awesome idea, and I really, really enjoyed it. Cups had a few different versions. They have 
the original version that you see in the movie, you know, when Becca's doing her audition, then you have the regular, you could say, pop version that was released with, I I believe it was the bonus edition of a soundtrack that is longer, and then you have a remix version as well. I think I probably, I, I think I like, I don't know. I, I think I like the original the best, to be honest, the original cup song. Uh, I think because just the first time I watched it, I thought it was just the coolest thing ever. So that just kind of sticks in my head and in a nostalgic way, it's going to always be my favorite. The Bella, the Bella's final song was at 85 on the Billboard Hot 100. And yeah, I know 85 in comparison to six is pretty low, but We've talked about it before. Being on the Billboard Hot 100 in any way is a huge accomplishment that, you know, you should be proud of. The riff off from the movie was at 86 on the Billboard Hot 100. So three different songs from the the soundtrack, you know, did well on the Billboard Hot 100. So the the songs and the soundtracks were just so big and were so popular. 97% 97% of Google, Google users liked the album. I just thought that was just a little fun statistic when I'm Googling movies or, you know, soundtracks or anything. I'm sure a lot of you will see on to the right of the screen. It will give uh, how many users, you know, liked or disliked or what they thought about whatever the topic is. And 97% of Google users liked the album. That's cool. A really interesting fact about the movie is all the singers sang in the movie. So no one, you know, had any, was doing lip syncing and someone else was filling in for them or anything like that. All of them either could sing or they practiced singing for the movie. Some of them sang live on set and some of them pre-recorded their, um, you know, their singing, but they all did really sing and they learned how to sing a cappella for the ones that didn't already know how to do it. So I think that is really, really cool. I, I've mentioned before, I was really heartbroken when I found out that Zac Efron, a.k.a. Troy Bolton, was not the one actually singing in the first place school movie, and it was Drew Seeley. So now I'm always very skeptical when I'm seeing singing in movies if the singer or the person who was singing is really doing the singing or if someone else is doing it for them. So very skeptical. But... I was really pleased to find out that, you know, all the actors and actresses either already knew how to sing or learned how to sing and learned how to sing a cappella. A cappella is a whole, you know, different thing than just regular singing because your voice is an instrument, of course, but especially in a cappella, it is a, that takes on a whole new meaning. So uh, to learn how to do that is when you're not naturally, or I shouldn't say naturally, when you're not a singer already is, I take it such a difficult cap task to do so it's just such a cool thing the pitch perfect soundtrack did something a lot different than other kinds of soundtracks not only just the first pitch perfect soundtrack all of them in general they painted songs in a new light that you know i'm not really used to seeing i know a lot of people that go on youtube and they'll watch covers of their favorite songs that's not something I really do. So, you know, watching these movies and even the first Pitch Perfect movie in general, I got to see some songs in a different way and hear them in a different way that I wasn't used to hearing. So some of the songs, I don't like them by the original artist, but hearing it in the movie by these other actors and actresses, I liked them. And it may have been the choreography and the storyline behind it and how the actor actress looked. But I think it, it, I think it was really cool. I have never, you know, seen covers or even soundtracks do something like what Pitch Perfect did. Cause I believe there is no original song off the soundtrack or in the movies at all. They are all covers from other talented artists that, you know, some of them are very popular songs, some of them not so popular. So I think that's really cool. And that's what I think attracts me to a lot of the music. 
The first song that I really love on the soundtrack is, of course, Cups by Anna Kendrick. As I mentioned before, it is just so cool and intriguing, you know, how the cup is used as an instrument. I don't believe Anna Kendrick came came up with that idea on her own, but she has a really nice voice, first off. She's a great, great actress, and she plays the role really well. And again, the cups... Just the act of using it as an instrument is so cool to hear. And I just really love, you know, the song. So it's just a classic. I'm always, I'm just always going to, you know, like it. The next one from the movie that I really like is Don't Stop the Music by the Treble Makers. That is treble as in the instrument and the makers. So play on words for the word troublemaker. I really love the song Don't Stop the Music by Rihanna. So I was very almost caught off guard when I heard it from the Troublemakers because it was a bunch of men singing it. And I'm used to hearing Rihanna in her very lovely, you know, soothing voice, you could say, sing it. But they did its justice for sure. They sang it well and they sang it in uh, such a different way. They brought it a lot. I mean, the song in general is very upbeat, but they made it even more upbeat, but upbeat in a different way. I, I can't exactly describe it. You know, my music terminology and stuff isn't the greatest. So I'm, I'm sure some of you who are a lot more skilled in that area would be able to maybe relate to what I'm trying to say, but they just, they made it their own, but it's still, you know, you, you still does the justice of the original version of the song. So I, they do a great job, and I really like the song. The next one is the Riff Off that is sung by the Barton Bellas, the main group for the most part. This is such a cool thing, you know, in the movie where all the acapella groups, they, you know, they get together and a random top, topic gets picked and they have to sing songs on that topic. And, you know, they're very, very you know, it's, it's very fast paced. Like for example, one of the movie is songs by singers that are Jewish. So you could only sing songs by singers who were Jewish. And then there, there were a few other examples that I can't remember right now, but it was just very interesting to watch and to hear the music in a compilation in different ways than ever before. And it's not in different ways because again, this was all acapella. So, you know, they were making stuff that I'm usually used to hearing from, you know, generated machines because most of it is pop music and they're just using their voices. So that was so cool to hear. And they just used some of my favorite songs and songs that I had never even heard before that uh, because I heard it from them for the first time, I don't like it by the original artist now. So just an awesome part of the, you know, movie and awesome song from the soundtrack. Next one I have on the list here is the Bella Finals, which include this includes the songs Price Tag, Don't You Forget About Me, and Give Me Everything. The Bella's Finals was, you know, that part of the movie with the big, you know, finale where you're like, is this ever going to end type thing? And not in a bad way, but just as an, oh my God, there's more. Because they did use three different songs. And again, you've heard these for the most part in a different way than we're used to except for the don't you forget about me that was saying in a very similar fashion that i'm used to hearing it and it was still sounding great but you know price tag and give me everything those two songs were saying a lot differently than you know the original versions like give me everything that's sung by a uh, pit bull so hearing a bunch of women sing that and, you know, multiple women and using their voices instead of other kind of audio generated sounds. It's just so cool. And it makes it, it, it makes it a lot more better. And, you know, I, I don't want to say spice things up, but it almost spices things up a little bit as well. So that is one of my favorites. Next one on the list here is Since You've Been Gone. This is sang by a multitude of people in the movie, originally sang by Kelly Clarkson, 
but it's done by five, six, seven different people because it's used in the audition and that's the song they have to sing for the acapella groups. And I, I was only used to hearing Kelly Clarkson sing it. So when I got to hear it from five, six, seven different people, it, I don't want to say it opens my eyes, but it kind of opens my eyes to how good the song was. Before, I kind of just took it as, oh, it's another Kelly Clarkson song. But hearing it and seeing all the different types of passion, you could say, the singer is, even if it was acting, defined the song in a different way for me, so it made it even better. And I do like the song by Kelly Clarkson herself. But hearing it sung by different people with voices I've never really heard before made it even better. Again, Pitch Perfect soundtrack, they did stuff just really interesting that, at least in my lifetime, I had never really seen it with movies. And it is a, a movie that really revolves around singing, and I love music, hence why I am talking about what I'm talking about right now. If you haven't seen the Pitch Perfect movies, I definitely recommend, if not all of them, I'd say the first one. It is my favorite. After this, we are going to talk about the best road trip songs if you guys are getting a little more comfortable with traveling and also later on, Post Malone. We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. talk about the best road trip songs. Now, if you guys are anything like me, you probably hate road trips or you're one of those people that really, really enjoy road trips. I'm someone who has a very, very hard time sitting still. And I was also born and raised in Florida. So, I mean, you can road trip around Florida. You know, I'm I'm originally from the East Coast, West Palm Beach, and now I live, you know, on the West Coast of Florida. So I, I go back and forth between there a few a uh, few times a year because I have family over there. It's about a three and a half, four hour drive. So that's about the most I'm used to. But you know, Florida isn't like other states, which I always forget. I have a friend who lives in Massachusetts and he's like, oh yeah, I work in Maine and then I go up to New Hampshire at least once a week to go like see my cousin or something like that. And at first I'm like, you go to three different states every week? And then he's like, well, yeah, he's like, New Hampshire is only about 45 minutes one direction. And then Maine is about an hour in the other direction. So I I often forget that other states can just jump back and forth, you know, between state lines so easily. Because, again, that's not really a Florida thing. I mean, if you live maybe at the top in the panhandle, you might go to Georgia or something a little more often. But that's just not something I'm used to doing. So a lot of traveling that, you know, I'm used to is flying. I also just like flying better because it's faster. I do, and like, I'm a little nervous of planes, not highly nervous, you know, but if, if I like driving, I would drive, but it's it's just so more time efficient. I mean, it's a three-hour plane ride usually can compared to maybe a 15 to 20 hour car ride. So it, it just makes sense. But, however, if, you know, where since we're coming out of the pandemic and people are feeling a little more comfortable traveling, if you're not comfortable enough to get on a plane, I'm sure some people are doing some road trips and just trying to see some nature things. If you don't want to eat like 
I don't go to some big event yet. But anyways, let's talk about the best road trip songs to listen to. Because even if you're with your favorite person in the world, road trips can drag on depending on how long they are. And if you hit traffic, every time I've driven out of Florida, I um, usually, you know, I'm on the 75 and I'll hit Atlanta rush hour. It always happens somehow when I'm leaving and Atlanta rush hour traffic is one of the worst things to ever exist. So if you're in traffic or maybe your scenery isn't the best, let's talk about the best songs to listen to. First one we have on the list here is one I've talked about before. It's Life is a Highway by Rascal Flatts. While you're cruising down the highway, you know, maybe speeding. I'm not advocating for speeding, but if you are, or even if you're not speeding, you're going the speed limit like a law-abiding citizen, Life is a Highway is a great song to listen to. It is upbeat, fast-paced, and just fun. It really gets you in the mood and gets, gets some good, you know, vibes going when you're driving and you never want to be angry or anything when you're driving especially if you're you know going on a road trip you're excited you're ready to get to whatever your destination is and have fun relax have a good time so great song to listen to next one on the list is living on a prayer by bon jovi this is a classic we've talked about bon jovi before one of the greatest rock bands of all time this is just such a great song to listen to whenever, especially when you're on a road trip, because one, it's long, and two, you can scream it at the top of your lungs, especially if you're alone. No one can stop you. Even if you're not alone, go ahead and scream at the top of your lungs. Just if you're not the one driving and maybe you're a passenger, make sure you don't scare the person driving out of their seat and cause a tragic accident. But great song to listen to, fun, and a classic. Next one on the list here is What Do You Mean by Justin Bieber. This is a good song to listen to on a road trip because, well, a little biased. We mentioned before, I'm a huge believer, but it's fun. Um, it has really interesting um, sounds to it. You know, when he released the song, it was a lot different than any of his other music when he was coming back into the music industry after taking a longer hiatus, you could say. And it's a little different than a lot of his other stuff. I mean, it fits in with the Purpose album just fine. But it was the first single, and it was different. It definitely, you know, grabs people, grabbed people's attention. And everyone knows it now. Pretty popular song. Um, and his voice sounds wonderful, as usual. So it, it it's just a good song to sing along to. And, you know, who doesn't want to sing along when you're in a car? Next one is Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. We have not talked about Katy Perry much, but I just want to add in, I absolutely love her. She is such a great singer, such a great voice, and she has such great songs. Teenage Dream is one of those songs you want to, you know, scream at the top of your lungs. It's so fun to listen to. And you can try and sing as good as Katy Perry. If you can, I'm jealous. If you cannot, join a club. But good song to listen to. For a road trip. Next on one on the list here is Die Young by Kesha. I love this song and also a little, you could say, biased because I saw Kesha perform this song live at the Jingle Ball one year. And, you know, there was just really cool choreography and a really cool set when, you know, she gets to the part about heartbeat to a drum and there were drums and there was glitter bouncing everywhere. And it was just so entertaining to watch. I love the song beforehand, so it didn't, like, it's not like I hated the song and I saw it perform it. I'm like, oh my God, so good. So, you know, it, it was one of, it's just, it's really upbeat. And again, you want to listen to upbeat stuff when you're driving. I mean, I'm assuming you might want to listen to sad stuff, you know, when you're in the car pretending that you're a, in a sad music video. I know we all pretend to do that as kids, especially if it's raining or something like that. Next song on the list is Can't Hold Us by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. If you're a rapper of any kinds, or if you're good at rapping, unlike myself, this is a good song to listen to. And it has a lot of good instrumental stuff, you know, that it can get you moving around in the car. Don't stand up and try to walk around, unless you're like an RV or something. Then, yeah, stand up and walk around. Unless you're driving. Stay seated if you're driving. But good song to listen to. Um, Again, upbeat, fast-paced, just... Get you some good vibes going. 
The next one on the list here, we have The Climb by Miley Cyrus. This is kind of on the opposite spectrum of everything we've been talking about so far. The Climb is a slow down song. I don't want to say it's a sad song. Um, It's inspirational for sure. And it's a classic by Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus has such a beautiful voice. And this is just one of many, many times she showcases it. I love this song greatly. I sing it all the time, listen to it all the time. I also think it's a good song to sing in the car if, you know, you just need to belt your heart out about something, whether it's good, bad, or whatever. Just start belting your heart out whether you can relate to lyrics or not. Next one on the list here, we have See You Again by Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth. This is another sad song here. I'm sure everyone has heard this song. It was a tribute to Paul Walker after he had passed, used in the Fast and Furious franchise. This is such a good song. It was Khalifa and Charlie Puth really did justice, you know, to serving some kind of a tribute to Paul Walker. And even without, even if it wasn't dedicated to Paul Walker, I think it's a great song in general, but I mean, it's dedicated to him, makes it so much better. And yeah, I've mentioned before, I, I love to listen to songs that have a lot of meaning behind it. And you can understand the meaning behind it because, you know, they publicly came out and said multiple times, this is what the song is about. And this is what it stands for. So that's a really good song. It is sad, but, you know, again, we all need a sad song once while in the car. Next on the list here is Love the Way You Lie by Rihanna featuring Eminem. This is a good song to listen to if you, if you're, again, if you're good at rapping and if you may be going through some kind of a breakup or something like that, you can really get into it and really feel passionate about it when you're singing. Another good thing about Love the Way You Up Lie is there is a part two to the song. So, you know, if you're on a road trip and you have a lot of time to kill, you can listen to both parts and either debate with the passengers or have an inner debate with yourself if you're by yourself about which one is better. I personally like the first one better part one, but part two is great as well. Next on the list here, we have Break Up in a Small Town by Sam Hunt. We've mentioned this song before. Sam Hunt is so talented and I really like this song by him. This is a really good song to listen to if you are currently going through a breakup of some sort or if you're driving to a small town, coming from a small town, or if you've never even been to a small town and you're from the biggest city in the U.S., but you want to sit there and imagine, I like, get it, go ahead and do it. It's, it's such a good song to listen to. Next on the list here, we have Pop Princess by The Click Five. This is definition of early 2000s pop music, boy band type stuff. I mean, it's a good song to listen to for a road trip in the car because it's as cheesy as can be. And if you're by yourself, nobody can hear you. People might be able to see you through your windows, depending on how tinted your windows are. But it's a song that is catchy. And even if you don't want to admit you like it and sing along to it in other places, you can do it in the car because... All rules with music is is just goes out the window when you're in the car. Next on the list, we have Storm Warning by Hunter Hayes. This is a country song over here, just like a break up in a small town. I love Hunter Hayes. He's so talented. And he has such, I'd say, interesting songs. I really like the song Storm Warning. If you haven't heard it, it is about just basically a girl that hits him like a hurricane, a tornado, and in a bad way, it kind of tears him apart and stuff like that. And he wishes he had a storm warning that he she was coming so he could take cover. I think Hunter Hayes does a great job of using such interesting ways to sing about people and things in his music. He, he's so talented, like I mentioned. And one reason I really like the song and singing along to it is not at all what you think about when you first hear the name of it. And it's a good song to sing to in the car because it is again I don't know even though it's kind of talking about a negative thing like oh wish I could have seen this bad thing coming it's really uh, upbeat and it has some great uh, guitar in it so 
Next on the list here, we have Big Girls Don't Cry by Fergie. Oh, this is such a classic song. Fergie is awesome. This is a song that I want to sing in the car because it, it just, it'll get your heartstrings pulling, even if you don't have anything to cry about, even if you're a big girl who shouldn't be crying, but you end up crying. It's okay to cry, by the way. Big girls can cry. Everybody can cry. They're normal. But this is awesome. And it will really get you in your feelings about something, whether you have something to be in your feelings about or not. I'm sure we've all been there where you don't exactly have anything to be sad about, but then you hear a sad song and you're almost making up imaginary sad scenarios in your head so that way you can, the music can hurt you more. Next on the list here is Single Ladies by Beyonce. You gotta listen to this in the car. You just have to, especially if you're a single lady. I myself am not a single lady, but I still listen to the song a lot, especially when I'm in the car. It is a classic by Beyonce. It's awesome. It's fun to listen to. And it's, you know, it's one of those songs that there's not much, you know, deep hidden stuff behind it. It's just a fun song about, you know, being single and stuff like that. So, I mean, Beyonce always hits it out of the park with whatever she's singing or talking about. So, good song to listen to on a road trip. Next one on here is Seven Things by Miley Cyrus. I'm a huge Miley Cyrus fan. I mentioned before, I grew up in the generation of Hannah Montana, so I've grown up with her. And, you know, she's matured, I've matured, and I'm still a huge fan of her music. Seven Things, you know, song's over 10 years old at this point, but if you don't know what it's about, which I'm sure you've heard it at least once, but again, if you have not, it is about uh, Miley talking about the seven things she cannot stand about this guy who she likes, but she knows she shouldn't be with him. All that typical cheesy young love story stuff, but it I'd almost call it some kind of, it's in the pop rock category very much. I mean, it, 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 it's just, it's really fast paced and it's almost the headbanger song. Like you really want to bang your head to it, even if you're not someone who bangs their head, which I'm not, but it makes me want to bang my head. And maybe that's from the music video because she's so intense in the music video with, I'd say rock vibes compared to pop. So that is, you know, really, really good to listen to in the car, especially, you know, if you're, if you're in a fight with your partner and you just want to spill out some lyrics. Next one on the list here, we have Airplanes by B.O.B. featuring Haley Williams. This is such a good song. I love it. Always have. And especially if you're a passenger in the car and you see some airplanes flying by, you can start singing this song and start relating it to your life in some way or another. This is just a good song to sing in the car because it's, even though it's kind of faster paced, I think it's a relaxing song to listen to for sure. And you want to be somewhat relaxed when you're in the car on a road trip. Never good to be angry in the car, especially if you're driving or stuck with a bunch of other people. Next one on the list here, we have Baby by Justin Bieber. We've spoken about this song many, many times. Whether you like it or you hate it, you know the lyrics, and it's catchy, and you want to sing along to it. And you know you want to rap Ludacris's part. It's just everything about it. So cheesy, and it's just something to sing in the car, especially if you don't want to admit you sing it or listen to it anywhere else. In the car, on a road trip, if you're by yourself, is the best time to do it. Next one on the list here, we have Breaking Free by the cast of High School Musical. Uh, Troy Bolton, Gabriela Montez, a.k.a. Zac Efron, and Vanessa Hudgens. This is a great song to sing in the car, especially if you're, you know, Generation C or Younger Millennial. Really, I would say, defined the childhood. So, you know, if you have more than one person in the car for me, you can hit the duet. You can go back and forth singing the song. And it is a great way to get distracted and almost step into another universe, especially if you love the movies, because you can really put yourself in there and really get into what is going on. Road trips are, you know, they can be good and they can be bad. I got to say, uh, over the past few years, I haven't minded them as much when I'm traveling with my boyfriend, because obviously uh, you would assume I enjoy having spending time with him, which I do. So a few hour road trips, you know, in the car with him are not as bad as they used to be. When I would be stuck in the car with my grandparents for three, four hours with complete silence, no radio, no nothing, and barely ever stopped for a bathroom break because they were 
determined to get everywhere at a certain time and not hit any kind of traffic. So, you know, if you're getting back and traveling and you're feeling more comfortable because, you know, things are starting to look up from this pandemic, definitely hit up some of these best road trip songs. After we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the best rapper, I mean, my favorite rapper, not the best rapper, Post Malone and all of his great accomplishments and what he has done over his career. Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. If you didn't like my best road trip songs recommendation, let's get into my favorite rapper Post Malone. We'll talk about his songs and maybe you'll get some inspiration about road trip songs from him. For those of you who don't know, Post Malone's real name is Austin Richard Post. I did not know that, so finding that out was very interesting. And yeah, yeah, I know. I just said he's my favorite rapper. I don't keep up with him very often. I listen to a lot of his new music, you know, when he releases it, but... I don't sit here and I don't, you know, do too much research on, you know, his backstory and where he came from and all that kind of stuff. But I am a a very big fan. I saw him at, it was New Year's Eve 2020 at Times Square in New York. It was so cool. He sang the song Circles and I will always remember it. So that was one of my favorite things ever. Post Malone was voted most likely to become famous in high school. That, he he definitely lived up to that standard. I, I remember in, you know, middle school and high school and stuff, I always thought those superlatives were, they didn't really mean much. And I think everyone can agree who you are in middle school or high school isn't exactly who you will always end up to be. But Post Malone stayed true to what people thought he would be. And he, he follows his dreams and, He's awesome, and he's doing what he loves. Post Malone is a rapper, songwriter, singer, record producer, and actor. He uh, was acting with Mark Wahlberg on Netflix. He plays a prisoner. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's very good, and I want to watch it because, I, again, I like Post Malone, and I also really like Mark Wahlberg. I think a lot of people can think of Post Malone, and they'll think about him in about 2014, 2015. I believe his career really, you know, kicked off in 2015 after White Iverson. That, you know, that song, I I don't want to say went viral, but it got very popular. It got people talking and everyone really became interested in him after that and was playing a lot of the rest, uh, the rest of his other kinds of music. Post Malone has set the record for the most weeks on Billboard's top R&B slash hip-hop album charts with 77 weeks. That is over a year. And again, he set the record for most weeks with it. That's so amazing. And not really surprising, Post Malone is such a uh, talented individual with such great songs. So um, that's not really a surprise there at all. Uh, I'm a little surprised I haven't heard more about that because I think Post Malone has talked about decently, but apparently not enough. His second album, Beer Bong and Bentleys, came out in 2018. That debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. Number one. Not, did it, not only like did it reach 100, but it date not 100, out number one. It debuted at number one. That's so awesome. Post Malone seems like such a good guy. And he seems like really fun to hang out with as well. But that just makes me really, really happy for him. Especially since this 
he wanted to work with music basically his whole life. So to have an accomplishment with only your second album to debut at number one is so great. And so I can only imagine how good that made him feel. Not really a surprise, but the Beer Bong and Bentley's album broke multiple streaming records when it was released with how well White Iverson did and how well it was played and everybody liked it. It's no surprise that his second album was highly anticipated and that it broke so many streaming records. Post Malone has three American Music Awards, 10 Billboard Awards, a VMA, and he has had six Grammy Award nominations. He has not won a Grammy, but he's had six award nominations, and just being nominated for a Grammy is a huge accomplishment, and I don't think rappers usually get as much recognition in the Grammys as they should because rap is such a talented genre that people, I think, often gloss over for a multitude of reasons. But, you know, six Grammy Award nominations is so, so, so good. So awesome for him. Something really, really interesting about Posty is in August of 2020, he became the first ever solo artist to be on top of both the U.S. Billboard Rap Airplay and Adult Contemporary with the songs Circles and Rockstars, two of my favorite songs, by the way. I I said it earlier, I'm just, I'm so curious as to why don't we hear more about Post Malone? I think everyone talks more about his tattoos and his hair than anything else, but he's such a talented individual and he seems so cool. I think Post Malone deserves all of the awards and, you know, recognition he gets and even more recognition i you know i'd like to see him a lot more in the media but you know think about it he may not want to be too much in the spotlight because i'm sure people have seen spending too much time in the spotlight can almost tear down your career for whatever reason i wouldn't know i'm i'm not famous by any means but he he may be content you know just staying where he is again he's doing what he loves and he really really loves to make music Post Malone received Diamond Certification by the RIAA in the U.S. for his song, Congratulations. I think of White Iverson, Congratulations, and Rockstar when I'm listening to, or not when I'm listening to, but when I'm thinking about, you know, his songs in his earlier career. Uh, Those are the songs I heard, you know, first. I remember... I had only heard White Iverson by him, and I liked it. I had on my playlist, but I wasn't really listening to any of his other music, and me and my friends were on our way back from, a, I believe, a football game in high school, and she was like, oh, put on the song Rockstar, and I'm pretty sure I put on the song Rockstar by Nickelback, and she's like, no, this isn't what I meant. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, no, by Post Malone, and I was like, oh, I haven't heard it. She's like, what do you mean you haven't heard it? Because I guess it was really popular at the time. And I, I don't know, I guess I was just a little behind for whatever reason. And I put it on, I was like, oh, wow, I really like this song. And I guess I was surprised because when I heard White Iverson for the first time, I went and I checked out the rest of the songs from that album, and I didn't like any of it. So I thought it was just like, oh, I only like one of his songs. I'm not going to like anything else. But I listened to Rockstar, and then Congratulations also was big around the time, too. So I know that I knew those three songs, and I was listening to them a lot. So when he released um, his next album, I was really, really on top of it. And uh, I'd say I like most of the songs off of it. So, again, he's so talented, and I I I wish people talked about it more. But, you know, it is what it is. Something really interesting about Post Malone is he grew up as a DJ and he really loves alternative rock or rock music. He, you know, didn't exactly grow up wanting to be a rapper or singer. He wanted to DJ. And, you know, I've seen pictures of Post Malone back in the day. You know, no tattoos, no dreads, just this baby faced guy DJing. And it's almost so weird to think about how much life and how much things can change with people and 
you know, I, I don't know if he ever imagined he'd be where he is today with all the fame and fortune he has and how, how many people love him. Like I said, he loves alternative rock music. And to be honest, that's not a huge surprise. If you listen to a lot of his songs, I think you can agree. They have rock tones to it. Even though they're rap, um, there's a lot of rock tones. The song Over Now, I believe that's off the Beer Bong and Bentley's album, that has rock tones to it for sure. So I, I think Post Malone has been doing a great job of incorporating some rock music into his rap. I'm really loving it. I love rock music, and I also like rap music, and I love him. So that's all crossing over very, very well. All right, let's talk about the best songs by Post Malone. And by best, I mean my favorite. Obviously, best and favorite can be very subjective. Some people, you know, might say his best songs are the ones out of one multiple words and stuff like that. And some people might say, no, it's these underrated songs that no one ever talks or listens to. So I have my list here. And, you know, if you like them, you like them. If you don't, or if you haven't heard them, I'd recommend go listening to it because in my opinion, I think they're really cool songs. First one on the list here is Circles. I mentioned this song before. I saw it, you know, I saw him perform it live in Times Square, New Year's Eve in New York, 2020. So cool. And he sounds really good live. Not everybody can perform live as well as they maybe can record the music, but Post Malone sounds so good live. And, you know, you can't, I don't know if he does, but he doesn't really sound like he auto-tuned as much. He sounds very similar to how he does in, you know, just regular recorded songs. So that's really, really cool. And again, just, it was... It's just a really, really good song. If you haven't heard the song Circles, it's just kind of about, you know, something about, oh, you and your partner are going in circles because you're having these issues, and but then you'll make up, and you'll have an issue again. You're just going in circles, and I'm sure everyone at least has heard of that issue if they have not been in the scenario themselves. Next on the list here is A Thousand Bad Times. I really like this song. If you can guess, it's about having a thousand bad times. He's, you know, singing about a song with this one uh, partner, and she's kind of crazy. He doesn't really want much to do with her, and he can tell she's kind of using him, and it's not going to last, and he should, like, kind of save himself the hurt, but he's been hurt. I thought he's had a thousand bad times, so what's another one, that kind of scenario? which I have to admit is not the greatest logic to have. I mean, just because you've been pricked by a thousand thorns doesn't mean add it the thousandth and one thorn to that list type thing, you know. But it's a really good song, and I really like it. Next one I have on here that I really like is I Know. I love this song. I think it is um very in line with some of his typical stuff, you know, what everyone's used to hearing. I think it is probably one of the, I'd say, most underrated songs of his. I mean, it wasn't a radio single or anything like that. And unfortunately, artists' most popular songs usually are radio singles just because the radio is really popular and it gets the word out about a song and more people listen to it and it just hits masses of people a lot easier. But it's a really good song and I really like it. Next one on the list here is Say. This is one of Post Malone's sadder songs. It is about, you know, kind of going through a breakup and, you know, talking about speaking to a partner. It's like, oh, can you stay here and we'll talk and... People have a few drinks, that kind of stuff. And ugh, it's off his debut album. And it's really sad because Post Malone just sings with so much passion. And you can hear a, a lot of heartbreak almost when he's singing the song because, you know, it's you can almost hear him saying to someone that, you know, it's not going to work out, but let's go ahead and kind of try even though we're destined for failure type thing so it's a really good song 
Next on the list, we have Over Now. I mentioned the song before. This has a lot of alternative rock tones to it. Um, this is just kind of about, you know, uh, him and the partner over now, and he's going to go out and do it to other people, kind of flaunt in the ex-partner's face, stuff like that. And he doesn't really care, and he's almost singing in a ruthless way that he's going to actually be ruthless and almost spiteful towards the ex-partner. So, you know, some sometimes some bad stuff may have went down there. Next on the list, we have Wow. I'm sure you guys might have seen this in the, I believe it was a Sprite or Doritos commercial. May have been both. The song was, no, it was a Doritos commercial. The song was used and Post Malone was in the uh, commercial as well. He's, you know, um, advertising the, I believe it was the Doritos Limon chips, Post Malone Limon chips. Really good chips, by the way. Um, and he was, you know, getting it tattooed on his face. Not really, though, but he may have one day. I don't know. So, but that song is used in it. And that's how I heard the song because it was a, I don't it was a single on the radio, I believe, but it wasn't that big. It wasn't that popular. I didn't hear that many people listening to it, nor did I see it online or anything. But I kept seeing it in the commercial, so I finally decided to go look it up and listen to it. And it's a really good song, and I like it. Next on the list, we have Sunflower. This is a song from Into the Spider-Verse, Spider-Man, if you haven't seen it. Um, I really like it. Um, it's... It's endearing, you could say. I don't know if heartfelt is the right word, but it's just kind of cute. Talk about how someone's, you know, the sunflower and in their life and that kind of stuff. Cheesy, but nonetheless, a great song. And Post Malone has a lot of diversity in his voice. You know, he can sing, he can rap. And like with the song Over Now, like we mentioned, he can sing like in alternative rock tones very well, too. So... I mean, you get to see so much different diversity with him. That's something I really like about him and something you see with Sunflower. Next one on the list here we have is Candy Paint. I really like this song. It was a, another popular one of his off the Beer Bong and Bentley's album. It's, I don't know if it's my favorite off the album because that's hard to do, but it's definitely up there within my favorites for sure. Um, kind of just talking about cars, women, that kind of stuff. Nothing, it doesn't have a lot of huge, deep set meaning behind it or, you know, anything like that. But it's really catchy and fun to listen to. I don't think anybody is surprised at this point that Post Malone has a lot of generations wrapped around his finger. And as he should, I mean, he's really talented, great songs, and they're all so good to listen to. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Post Malone, I definitely would recommend people looking into this his music if you don't already listen to it. Really, really, really love it. And he seems like a really cool guy, too. I'd like to hang out with him at one point. Thank you guys so much for listening to the GSMC Music Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask everyone to go ahead and please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review. It really helps us out. Also, please give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope everyone stays well, safe, and healthy. Maybe go check out some Taylor Swift or the Pitch Perfect soundtrack. Or, you know, if you're going on a road trip, look into the songs. Or on your road trip, maybe, you know, do some music discovery for Post Malone. Have a great rest of your day, evening, night, whatever it is. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you soon. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music. Music from sports to entertainment and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.